Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Today, John Coleman and I have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Liz Lister. Dr. Liz, it's always great to see you. I've got an important question, very important question. Now, you know, and I know that for some reason, women's upper lips, as we get older, upper lips get those those uh, wrinkles, those little crevel, you know, whatever they are, and men don't seem to do that. Now, I was told once that's because we shave and they don't, but here's the question. Botox has become very, very popular. And the downside of Botox is people who walk around like this. With no right. upper, you know, their upper lip is puffed up and it all looks, oh, and then they do that to their forehead. Botox and fillers, I mean, these are seem to be double-edged swords. Let's talk about that. Absolutely. I, I agree with you. I think they're growing in popularity. People definitely overdo it. We've all seen the movie stars who have either a perpetual expression of surprise or they have no expression at all and can barely move their mouth when they're speaking. So it's not pretty when it's overdone. We've talked, we've had other conversations about skin care and skin procedures. So this is a bit of a category within that, I would say. Okay. So what's, what's, what's the skinny on all this? Is it primarily women for some particular reason, or is that just a myth? And uh, what should we do about it short of Botox? Well, it's definitely interesting. So you've you've touched on a couple of different issues that are happening. One is the loss of elasticity, which causes the skin to droop, and that leads to wrinkles. Okay, so there's wrinkles here, there's wrinkles here, there's wrinkles here. Okay, laugh lines, all right? So it's not necessarily bad, it's just changes that happen as time goes by. Uh, why it happens more in women probably has to do with loss of estrogen, okay? Mm. And uh, so with men, of course, there's a level of testosterone. It declines as men get older. However, it's more of a gradual decline versus women going into menopause and things drop off more abruptly, okay? So we definitely have those kind of hormonal differences, which we know affect the skin, and you've touched on a couple of different areas. One, So one is wrinkles. So Botox, Botox is a brand name. It's kind of like saying Kleenex or Band-Aid, by the way. Oh. All right. So these okay. are injectable products that cause paralysis of the muscles. And it does it in such a way that the muscles relax and then the wrinkles appear less prominent. Ah, oh. they don't really go away, though. Well, okay, not with the Botox, the other brands that are the four that are FDA approved, Botox, Juveau, Dysport, and Xeomin. Mm. All right, those are the four. I'm not sure if I'm saying all those brand names correctly, but those are the four that are FDA approved for dealing with wrinkles, and they all work the same way. They all last about three to four months per treatment, and it can be done for cosmetic reasons to make reduce the appearance of wrinkles, but can also be done for therapeutic reasons. So migraines are being treated medically nowadays mm. with mm. these injectables. They're usually starting all the way around and all these muscles that cause this chronic tension, headache kind of situation. Yeah. So there are some migraine conditions that are being successfully treated with, with Botox. That's interesting. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. yeah. Then the up category are fillers. Now fillers are what you're talking about with these little lines here and the lips, the bee sting lip. Yes. I'm really not much of a fan of this. I have not gone there yet. However, the fillers vary because it depends on where we're talking about, right? And we're only talking about the face. People have these things done all over their bodies. So I'm not really talking about the rest of the body very much. <laughs> but on the face, we're talking about fillers. And that's where you're going to be able to smooth out the, the loss of structure of the skin is causing those lines to appear or these folds that are happening here. Mm -hmm. All right. And so they're all made from hyaluronic acid. This is a normal 
substance that's found in the joints, it's found in body fluids, for example, eye fluid, it acts as a cushion and a lubricant. So our bodies naturally make hyaluronic acid and it's one of the many things that decreases as, as time goes by. Okay, now for better or worse, the Botox products are all related to toxins. The Botox is short for mm. botulism toxin, right. botulinum toxin yeah. that causes this muscle paralysis. Okay, not obviously it's very localized and does not get into the system. There have been, I believe there have been zero deaths. Okay, it does not go into the system. All right, it's just acting locally. And the fillers, the hyaluronic acid, are also made in the laboratory by from made from bacteria. So okay, so I'm, I know. I'm, so I'm going to be Debbie Downer for the uh, for the uh, uh, practitioners who who uh, d proliferate uh, uh, all over the country, uh, who have proliferated and provide these services because people want to look better and so on and so forth. I happen to believe that the aging process and all these little wrinkles and everything else, you earn them. So why give them up? Uh, but for understanding some people who do or want to do it more naturally, short of getting fillers and things like that, are there uh, things that you can do to help uh, as you're losing naturally, as you get older, the ability to produce these things in the quantities that may have served you better uh, when you were younger, are there things that we can do short of fillers and uh, these toxins uh, sure, to help us look better? Yes, absolutely. And we've talked about those in a couple of our skin discussions that people can go take a look at those videos. Probably good to maybe link up this discussion to those talks on the structure of the skin and how to take care of our skin. Absolutely, no question about it. Number one is don't smoke. Uh, number two, I would say, is a really good routine of caring for our skin and, of course, good nutrition. What we put into our bodies will reflect a lot of people have skin issues due to food sensitivities. And so as we get older, sometimes there's certain foods that maybe we could eat before with no issues, but then later in life we have to break up with certain foods. For some people, dairy, for some people, gluten can cause issues with their skin. So there's absolutely no question that there's all kinds of things that we can do. To your point, there's definitely a, a standard of beauty that goes along with youth. And uh, we would all do well to try to not completely get sucked into to that idea. I'm with you on that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So... The downside, it seems to me, that the worst case of the fillers and the Botox things really is just a, a aesthetic. That Absolutely. You you start looking puffy. You just it's an an unnatural look. That's what I don't like about it. Right. Um, well, but what about done. the side effect? What about the side effect of emptying your bank account? <laughs> That's about the only side effect, actually. It's really, in terms of medical, and also speaking of the bank account, these are all temporary. Mm -hmm. They only last a few months. I've read about movie stars paying thousands of dollars to have fat transfers to parts of their body to look, kind of have areas of their skin more filled out. However, uh, this is way short of that. Uh, pretty reliable. These are all pretty well studied at this point. And uh, when it's done in the right way, uh, it doesn't look terrible. People who can't move their face because they have too much like that, uh, they were in, or or sometimes I've seen women who try to save money and go to someone who's not that skilled at it, who's charging less to do it, and they'll end up with big witch's eyebrows pulled up yeah. in a, in a big yeah. pointy configuration on their forehead. So... When it's done nicely, it can be uh, more subtle and yeah. still still lasts for a few months, but it is a problem. I've always been concerned that uh, I would get sucked in and want it to be more and more. And and poor Joan Rivers, that's kind of like the worst case scenario. She was really yeah. addicted to yeah. these procedures. You know, I, I, I think, really I think we all worry about the fact that if we have enough of this stuff done, uh, 
uh, when it is our time to go, and we know death and taxes are the only two things that are sure in this world, is uh, uh, if you have an open casket, it's going to say, boy, they never look so good. <laughs> so anyway, rather than being debut, I do have a guilty pleasure. I mean, I, I don't want people to think that I just, you know, think that people shouldn't do this stuff. I love a pedicure. So that's my guilty pleasure. And, that's and I have to go back because it doesn't last forever. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Can't just brush your teeth once. Got to do things on a regular basis. So the basic <laughs> skincare regimen is much more important than uh, any of these kinds of treatments that people subject themselves to on a regular basis. Well, I've learned a lot about Botox and fillers, and I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.